Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 58, or sorry, 59, if I can count correctly, of Anime on Draft. Um, we are back to audio in this one um, because we are not together. And But once again, there are only two of us, so that is me, Rolando, and Drew. I'm back. He's back. The other two are still gone. The other two or are Mark, gone. Mark left. Mark right. is in Mexico, which, um, uh, yeah, I mean that good luck. I mean, <laughs> he should be fine. He's Mexican. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll be all right. He'll be fine. Uh, but that does put a damper on episode 58 releasing. So you probably will be hearing this episode before episode 58 comes out. Uh Oh, um, Uh-oh. but it'll basically be covering stuff we're covering in this episode. Um, it was just Mark and I, um, doing, talking about some of the premieres for summer 2018. And we're kind of going to do some of that today. So, uh, why don't we, get we got started? a very special premiere this week, but, oh uh, yes, you we'll, are correct. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll yeah. get to that. Um, it's very special to us because, it's something we premiered with. That's right. That's right. But before we get into that, um, Drew, you picked this beer. Uh, what, I it, did. what is it? It is the Shiner Bach. Uh, Shiner is a brewery from, if you've been to or know of Texas, um, you probably know about Shiner. It's very popular over there. And this is their Bach style um, of the Shiner. It's, uh, what is it, Spotsol Brewery um, in Texas. And um, yeah, I drank it a lot when I was in Texas and I thought somebody else was going to be joining us and it would be an easy beer for them to get, but uh, they're lost forever. And uh, yeah, this is what we ended up with. It's still it's still a good beer. I've had it before. Brewed in Shiner. That's why it's That's called right. the Shiner Bach. Well, yeah, well, they have like a regular. It's just like an amber ale, um, I believe, um, or a Pilsner. It's one or the other. But yeah. Um, it's just called Shiner, and then this is like their Bach variation of it, I guess. Mm, wow, this is a small town, it says on the bottle. Uh, mm-hmm. Population of Shiner is 2,069. That is very yeah, that's small. That's all they do there. They just brew brew Shiner. And they all like work factory. at the brewery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Lynchburg, uh, Tennessee, where they brew um, Jack Daniels. It's like that's all there is there. This is... What's the percentage on this? I'm trying to find it on the bottle. Uh, I don't have the bottle in front of me, but I can look it up. China um, Bach ABB. Let's see. Probably like 5%. 4.4. 4.4. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, the head dissipated on this very quickly. Yeah, like instantly. Like it started with like kind of a big head, a little bit um, with that same kind of dark amber color. And then it like just... See you later. <laughs> no it's just more. Gone. Yeah. No more. No. No even traces of it. <laughs> it has a lot of legs, though. If you like, you know, swish it around in the glass. I'm Pretty. not getting that too too much on mine. Um, but it's that dark, that dark kind of amber color you expect of a Bach. I don't think we have we done a Bach um, on the show before. I think only once. <laughs> yeah. So. And it was a German ob- Bach, obviously. Um, yeah, I think most of them are. I mean, this brewery, this brewery is in um, Texas, like we said, but it is a uh, highly German influential brewery, I would say, with the name Spotzel. It smells so. very like grainy. Yeah, malty for sure. But when you, um, I took a sip and you get like a lot of spices. Um, nothing that comes like right out up front for me though. Mm-mm. This is a pretty, pretty standard Bach flavor. Yeah. Like malty and like some, I, I don't even think it's coriander because it's not spicy enough, if that makes sense. Um, I think it's just hoppy. Yeah. Hoppy, malty. Pretty standard beer. It's pretty refreshing, actually. This is a good beer for summer. Yeah, um, this is one in the Texas heat when you're out there at a festival or whatever you're doing, walking around. It's like this is a good one to kind of session. Uh, their regular Pilsner um, 
is also really, really good. You just drink it. It's it's kind of like a step up from the Budweiser's and Coors, um, a little bit higher level, I would maybe say. But that same sort of style, which is like, yeah, you can drink a ton of these and be all right. Yeah, you wouldn't be like your wallet wouldn't be hurting because you're not just drinking a shit ton of craft brew. It's yeah, like, exactly. Um, but it's also not like I just spent three dollars to buy a six pack of Bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, if you if you ever do have this shiner, it reminds me a lot of uh, PBR. It's kind of that level, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I think this is like even just a, a little bit of more of a complex flavor, a little bit of a step up, just because it's you know not just that watery corn sort of tasting. Uh, right beverage this is like at least it it has a little bit more hops it has a little bit of the malt in it and a, that little bit of a caramel flavor that's that makes it a little bit more complex than corn water yeah and it's got like a you know fairly lively mouthfeel too yeah i think that helps with the kind of fresh um i guess taste or feeling and it, and, and it's hoppy but it's not going to leave that bitter ipa taste in your mouth Mm -hmm. it's it's just goes down smooth like you're saying um good good carbonated mouthfeel and you know just easy to drink i like it good for summer good when it's really really hot because it's really hot in my room (laughs) Mm. speaking of good for summer last week's beer um was another hazy ipa Mm -hmm. (laughs) new england style and uh, it's from brewery west and I think you would like it. Uh-huh. I think that's one that I was saying would be good in summer and, you know, bring to the golf course, that kind of thing. But well, um, maybe uh, we have a golf trip coming up. Maybe uh, maybe that's in the cards. For maybe. Us. <laughs> except uh, Mark was like, oh, except it was a $18 four pack. And I'm like, I am not shit. buying it. I am not buying this for golf. I'm buying this to enjoy like yeah, next time. Like I'm <laughs> we, $18 yeah. for a four pack or a six pack, a four of the tall cans. Oh my, Oh my God. It, it was really good. Damn. It was a really good beer. You'd say it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. If you want to enjoy oh, it, man. but I oh, wouldn't, man. um, I guess like I was like, after I heard that, I was like, Oh, I don't know about taking this to a golf course anymore, even though it would be enjoyable. <laughs> No, that's that's when you sit on the front porch and you kind of sit yeah. uh, in, a, in a nice in a nice glass, not at like the bottle or the tall boy can in like a half koozie and you're like kind of rednecking <laughs> it out there. <laughs> yeah, it's also like nine percent or like eight point something percent. Oh, so God. it's like super yeah. strong. And like, yeah, <laughs> never mind about that. Just, yeah, stick um, to stick to the swamis or something. <laughs> yeah, the swamis is solid for bringing on the yeah. golf course. That's right. Well. Well, anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, pretty standard. What do you think uh, for your rating for this? Um, I'm going to give it a three point five. It's just it's not excellent. It's not bad. It's like right in the middle for me. Um, it tastes good. Um, brings back good memories. Um, definitely perfect for the summer. So that's uh, it's not as good as some of the other things that we've had, but it's it's refreshing and it's nice uh, and it tastes really good right now. So three point five for me. Cool. Um, I'm at like a 3.25. It's good. It's solid. It's not, um, like, like you said, like if it was, if I were at like a music festival outdoors and it's hot and I don't want to just be drinking Bud Light or Coors Light or whatever, Mm -hmm. I would definitely get this. It's not expensive. It's not, um, super cheap corn water as you as you would put it but yeah um it's enough to session and you know kind of have a refreshing drink so pretty yeah. solid right on okay um well let's move on to the anime section of our pairing which is that special premiere you were talking about what, Ooh, what is are what you is guys it? ready what are you guys it? ready it's attack on titan Oh, shit. Episode 38. Episode 38. Season 3 premiere. That's right. 
So who'd have, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Um, I was one of the unfortunate people um, who didn't make it to the premiere screening for this episode at Anime Expo because everything, every line to like almost every fucking panel was capped. Um, yep. So rather than just being line con like it was in 2017, 2018 was capped con because basically every freaking thing like you just couldn't get in because they they got everyone in the venue but once you were in the venue you couldn't then do anything anything. (laughs) (laughs) they just moved the lines indoors yeah out of that god fucking forsaken heat um it felt like it was bad that weekend felt like atlanta Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) see like the thing um is like because you've been to dragon con and you know like the August heat in in Atlanta, humidity. the humidity. Yeah. Like, just imagine that. Um, and that's basically what it was like out outdoors and um, oh, at God. Anime Expo. I was like, so, why? So you're saying you're, so, you're saying I made a good decision <laughs> to instead Being go in to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say that. Um, yeah. For the most part, you know, Mark and I were indoors, but when you had to go, like it influenced our decisions on what to do where uh-huh. if you wanted to get food there, it's ridiculously overpriced cause it's a convention. But yeah, of if you wanted to go to LA live and, you know, get up food elsewhere or drinks elsewhere, you were just yeah. like, Oh, it's like one o'clock. Uh, I don't want to go out in that heat. It's like 104 with 23% humidity. Um, yeah, I don't want to go outside, so I guess I'll just spend the extra six dollars and eat something here. Yeah, yeah, well. terrible. But, anyways, episode thirty-eight, Attack on Titan. Um, what? So, there are a couple of things that happened in this episode, but what did you think? What were your first impressions? First off, I really, really enjoy the new opening. Um, much different than what they are uh, used to doing. And I, yeah. I rather, rather enjoyed that. Um, I see one of the notes that you have here, and this stood out to me as well, but uh, it's overall the animation quality while being more consistent is different. Yeah. The the thing that stood out to me the most was kind of their faces were a lot more angular. There was a lot less black in the outline and everyone generally seemed a little bit older because everyone was portrayed as like a little bit taller. Yeah. I, I would I would say like Levi, especially when you when you first meet Levi in the first season, he looks like this little munchkin, annoying brat kind of a guy who's a badass. And then here he's like yaoi number one angular <laughs> face, like <laughs> tall and, and buff and like sword dancing around and doing his thing like the the disparity here is is kind of crazy do you agree or uh i i agree because on honestly the episode started and then you can't really get it from like the first couple scenes but as soon as the opening comes in you see everyone and you're like wait why does it look different than like the previous two seasons like it just looks different like and i mean yeah. like you mentioned it, the animation was more consistent. So mm-hmm. like it's consistently at like a slightly higher level, but it does mm-hmm. seem like the overall designs change slightly. Like maybe there's a different key animator or like something. I kind of, I kind of like it though. I, I think it brings more maturity, more maturity to the show, which is where it seems to be going. Mm-hmm. Um, You also have here, you know, um, focus shifting from external Titan enemies to internal like this menacing looking king sitting on his throne in the shadows and like this secret council meeting about Pastor Nick and all this craziness. So it's it's definitely I I like I like the shift that it made um, because it's becoming a more mature show where it was like before blood Titans, you know, wrestling and now it's like internal politics, which is I, I I like that. I know some people might be disappointed about that, but yeah, because last season, like you could already see the shift towards like a more human enemy because mm-hmm. there was the group that um, uh, Reiner and all of 
that group, you know, I forgot the other dude's name, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bertolt. Um, yeah. so there, th- there's their outside group and now we're like, not really sure. Like, are they the enemy or are they actually like the group that's going against right. the people that are pulling the strings in side the walls like the royalty and yeah. like the military police like it seems like it's really there's like this gray area over like who the real enemy is and it's not like just this common titan enemy anymore well i think it's safe to say there's like three or four factions like whatever way you want to um look at it there's dumbass titans the ones that who are not or we don't know them to be human. They're just out there eating and running around like idiots. There's the like Titan supporters, which is, you know, guys like Bertolt and Reiner and, and all of them and Annie who, you know, can control the Titan powers and there's some sort of deeper meaning there. Then there's like the church slash um, military police now slash like uh, the king and that whole faction. And then lastly, there's like the scouts sort of um, what's uh, what's the blonde leader's name? Um, Irwin. Irwin um, and their sort of faction. So there's like four, four sort of like main things going on here. And then you have like some outliers. You have like um, Aaron's dad, you know, we don't know where he's at. Um, the, the fur Titan or the eight Titan. We don't know where he is. Is he with, you know, the other supporters or not? So there's, there's like this total, total divide. And we're just like stuck in between all of them and being like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like it, it kind of seems like, to me where where it's going is there's probably a group that is you know either split off or is at war with the current royalty mm-hmm. and like every like there's this underlying thing where there's this like line of blood that is this titan changing power Kind of like humans mm-hmm. into Titan changing power. And those are like kind of like the main weapons. Mm-hmm. And so what I kind of see is like the royalty kind of has brainwashed the whole population into believing like, oh, all Titans are bad, blah, blah, blah. They put up these walls and like, you know, even use Titans to make the walls. And then mm-hmm. There's the out external groups that they're warring with, like Reiner and Berthold's group. It maybe like is why I kind of think they split off from the initial group and like they're trying to, you know, fight, get in and like, you know, fight that group, I guess. So like maybe the scouts and all of them are just caught in between because like the way they're trained is kind of like this really blind rage towards Titans in general. So it seems like there's some evil scheming going on. Do you know how many episodes this, uh, this season's going to be? No, I do not. I think it's, I think it's not planned yet or they haven't announced it. I hope it's 24. That would be, that would be good. Cause last season it, it was only 12. Right. And we kind of felt short changed a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, because the first season was like 25 and then this one yeah. was like another 12. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, or I mean the last one, sorry. So this, mm-hmm. I'm hoping it's 24, 25. Like I think, yeah. I hope they finish it is my, my, my hope. So can they, can they finish it? I think, I think it's done, right? The manga? I don't know. Mark would be a better person to ask that. I know. He's, I guess. Yeah. He's read it. Mark's yeah. the the manga master. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Manga master Mark. Manga there master Mark. M M M. But uh, a couple. Uh, or I mean, one more thing with this uh, episode was I just fucking busted up laughing when Armin was getting. I mean, it's not like <laughs> it's not cool, but like it, it was just funny that Armin is like dressed up as Krista yeah. slash Historia and he just like starts getting molested by that kidnapper. <laughs> when you even get you even get a little emotion out of uh, Mikasa too because she like is watching and she's like I feel bad for him. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you just like uh, the dude is like super creepy. So it's just yeah. like you're like in your mind, you're like, oh, thank God, Chris is not the one getting molested. But like at the same time, it's like, well, I mean, it sucks for Armin. Like it's like just because yeah. he's a dude doesn't mean it's okay that he's getting molested. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the kidnapper is like oh you're you're a lot more yeah. muscular than i thought <laughs> <laughs> damn yeah oh, that was man. that was that was too much that um, oh god <laughs> i think the last thing too it's like uh, we didn't talk too much about the story but um the kind of climax to the episode because it ramps up pretty quickly was uh was it kenny the ripper is that is that his name mm-hmm. is it kenny kenny something um him and uh his like crazy machine gear and then that group of people that's with him with the same and Levi is yelling. So man, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped for next, uh, next week. It's going to be called pain, I guess. So, and they've got like in for, for some the, pain. a weird, like cowboy Western look to them and they shoot, yeah, shoot yeah. guns. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Got some, um, got some West world, West world going on now. <laughs> there's, there's some interesting things going on that I, honestly didn't expect it to turn out like this when yeah. the series first started oh definitely not definitely not it's cool though I, yeah i love it i mean i'm looking forward to the next episode um also looking forward to seeing how the other two um kind of feel about how this yeah. turned out and you know what their expectations yeah. for the season are so definitely definitely so well right on now that we've kind of gone over our pairing, um, let's move into our happy hour. So summer 2018 premieres. So we're going to continue this topic. So those of you that are listening to this um, before episode 58 releases, um, in that episode, Mark and I kind of talk about the summer premieres we'd been watching. So we covered like quite a few of them, but um, Drew what summer premieres have you seen so far? So um, before I left on my trip to, we had watched uh, Hanabato together, the uh, Batman anime. So I'm continuing to watch that and I'm caught up. So we'll talk about that one a little bit. Um, Attack on Titan, obviously, uh, we just started talking about that. Um, I'm continuing Steins Gate and uh, we're going to put that one on hold for this week. Wait for Mark to come back and probably talk about the last few episodes of Steins Gate Zero. Um, still really awesome. Still really enjoying it. And um, the other one I'm watching is called Cells at Work. Um, Crunchyroll is simulcasting it and it's really awesome. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I believe it's on the third episode, um, but it's basically a, a disease is happening and how do these these cells react and make your body better? And the cells are anime people and it's cool. It's like Osmosis Jones, if you've seen yeah. that. Um, Except you've got Hanakana as a red blood oh, cell. Oh, I knew I knew she was going to get brought up. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I like this show. But <laughs> it, having a meta, uh, a background in the medical field, it's it's cool kind of like seeing these diseases animated and how the body like fights it. And it's pretty it's pretty medically accurate for the most part. There's some things that are a little strange, but uh, for the most part, pretty, pretty accurate. And Studio David does it. Uh, so you Jojo fans. Um it has a little bit of a JoJo vibe to it, so you may you may enjoy it. I've seen the first episode um, of this, mm-hmm. so like I I just basically been on a first episode spree for premieres <laughs> because I wanted yeah. to you know kind of get the scope out um, mm-hmm. since I didn't really do that for the past couple seasons, and uh, it was interesting. I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna give it the three rule, the three episode rule, yeah. see how far I go. But I did like osmosis jones um when i was younger so um i'm hoping it's it's if it's you've good. um if you've seen the osmosis jones tv show because they had like a movie and a tv show yes um it's it's more like the tv show where it's like each week there's something new going on like a new disease um i think it will be cool and i was thinking about this in the back of my head um when they start getting like medications involved. Cause like right now it's been mostly like red blood cells, white blood cells, uh, killer T cells, and you know, a couple of other like immune response cells, but like they're going to start getting involved, um, other cells and like throw some medications in there and you know, whatever. So I'm, I'm curious to see where it's going to go. And um, yeah. it's, it's just been, it's fun. It's, it's mindless, um, humor. It's funny. Um, a little bit of action in there. Um, I, I enjoy it. 
Cool. You um, also mentioned that you started watching My Hero Academia. I did. So I, I started, I'm on episode four, I believe. Um, I was doing that a little bit while I was in uh, Wisconsin for those last couple of weeks. But I, I like it so far. It's it, it has promise. I, I, I'm really digging the animation style and the animation in general. It's been top quality. Uh, and they're like pumping these things out. It's already on yeah. like 58 or something. Yeah, you so. just keep keep watching like it. Yeah. You know how like you went on like a one piece watching spree? Yeah, yeah. Like this is like you're going to end up doing that with this because right. I remember Mark was talking about like, oh, man, you just got to watch it last season. And I started mm-hmm. watching it and like I was like, oh, shit. Like I just watched eight episodes in a row. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's good. Um, so if you catch up to that, we, the three of us can discuss it, um, on the podcast. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be working on it. Um, and I know we got to keep working on Monogatari too. So those, those are a couple things on the back burner that are, uh, that are always piquing my interest, particularly in Monogatari, but I'll always watch Monogatari. Yeah. I mean, we'll, <laughs> and there's a new, they announced a new season of Monogatari. But yeah. I, I won't talk about that right now. We can talk about that another time. <laughs> we, we, we got to, con- we're going to continue the next arc on that next week when we have yeah. more than two people. Um, yeah. So, uh, Hanebato, you mentioned that. So you're yep. caught up to episode four? Yep. Totally caught up. Um, I wish I had a Zomex sponsorship. Uh, man, that product placement. <laughs> yeah, Mark and I were talking about it last week, and it's like clearly um, Yonex is like, hey, you want to just put our name on everything? Just like, like throw it the, in It's there. on the shoes. It's on, it's the, on the shuttlecock. shuttlecock. <laughs> it's on the, the racket itself. It's on their uniforms. Like, like man. Jesus. <laughs> Well, going all out. I mean, like, to be honest, like the only other like badminton manufacturers I know about other than Yonix are like Wilson and yeah, Babolat. And well, like, this is this is what's going on in the back of my mind. The Japanese Olympics are going on um, in the next two years or whatever, and they haven't had like a Japanese badminton champion. So this is Yonez. Yonex is like, all right. We're gonna get. We're gonna get back. We're gonna make Japan popular or uh, with, Batman popular in Japan, and, and they're gonna and they're gonna win. <laughs> they're just gonna win the Olympics. And it's like Yonix <laughs> is like it, it's a Japanese brand, so like I guess it makes sense. Um, but this is like the man, this is the, the other uh, anime that Yonix kind of shows up in is uh, Baby Steps, the tennis anime, mm-hmm. and uh, like the main the main character. Um, he gets like a a a Yonix quote unquote sponsorship. It's not Yonix, but like they uh, it's like a similar name. Right. Um but it's it's pretty funny. It's like, oh, like just like just like if there was some random ass sponsorship on an animation in America, they would have like Spalding or Wilson yeah. like all over it. It's it's just it's kind of funny. Oh if, when you watch Harukana Receive because Mark and I talked mm. about this last week too of these sponsorships that is clearly sponsored by the Mikasa brand, the, the volleyballs because <laughs> that branding is Man, all over the place. The year of sports branding or the, the season of sports branding, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what did you think of, uh, what do, what do you think of so far? Cause I think we've only gotten your opinions of like episode one. Like, what do you think yeah. about the story so far? I, I think it's okay. I it's like this it's so forced this um what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the conflict is so forced, like oh, tomboy is tall and and so she she hates everybody for thinking that she wins just because she's tall, and then coach comes in like you you don't just win because you're tall, you win because you play hard, and then she's like, All right, now I'm gonna actually play now. So it's like one episode that's that that's solved. Next episode, you know, mommy issues, which which is fucked up though. It's like <laughs> the mom just like walks out on her and just doesn't say where she's going, doesn't say what she's doing. She loses cause she's like sick. <laughs> her mom just leaves like what yeah and then and then all of a sudden comes back later with like this blonde prodigy with her it's like slap your daughter in the face harder bitch jesus christ yeah not to mention (laughs) that that prodigy is the one that she's now facing in training camp right it's like right just totally totally shit on her too like man so what i was comparing 
the way the story was playing out a little bit. So last week I was comparing it to uh, to Saki, the Mahjong anime, uh-huh. because it's almost a strikingly similar like family issue thing where in Saki, it's the older sister that um, like you think that she abandoned um, her younger sister and like it's all like mm. has to do with like this like prodigy slash type deal although like in Saki it's m- magical mahjong so that's like different <laughs> um, but, magical mahjong. no really but it's still you know um, I can tell this show is gonna have a little bit more than like the absurd Yuri and fan service that uh, that Saki did but like it just seems mm. a little like the underlying conflicts with the main the main heroine are a little similar. Like there's going to be this like psychological thing with like in Saki was the older sister and this, it's going to be the mother. And so I'm yeah. interested to see what happens, especially because I've seen on a lot of like reactions to the, this anime so far is while it's, it's done very well. Um, Mm -hmm. people are saying that because I think it's only 13 episodes that they're rushing through things. And so certain characters are getting the shaft. And so like the blonde, um, the blonde prodigy from Denmark, um, Connie, apparently she's supposed to be like a really cool character that is like super supportive or something. Like she gets, um, Hanesaki, uh, you know, motivated for badminton again like in a good way whereas like Mm. the way we're portrayed we have her portrayed in this fourth episode is she's like i'm a crazy bitch that is just here to destroy all of you like kind of thing it's like well that's yeah like a huge like self self motivated yeah so i i don't i don't know how they're gonna you know, pull that one out, but I guess like there's going to be conflict that they're going to resolve with her and the mother and stuff. In the next episode. Yeah. Well, I don't well it sounds like she, the, the only thing I can think of, it's like the mom still wants the dot, the true daughter to like win and stuff. And that's why she's wanted so badly to play her in, in a match. She's like, I, I have to beat you. If I don't beat you, it doesn't matter or whatever. So I think like the mom probably holds the true daughter in higher standards and maybe that's why she's pissed and then there's conflict, but I, who, who knows? Like, yeah. It, I, it's, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's not going to like keep us guessing and everyone's going to be friends and everybody's going to go to the Olympics and everybody's going to make out. Oh, that's the part I'm looking and, forward to. They're going to go to the Yuri. Olympics and make out just yeah, at the Olympics right. at, on Yuri the metal Batman stage. Grills. On mm. the metal stage, they're just going to mm. make out. Mm. That's going <laughs> to be animated in 2020. 2020. They're going to do it in in anticipation in of the Olympics, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, It's entertaining, though. I'll, I'll continue to watch it. Yeah, it's, it's good. I honestly, that is like one of my top for the season currently just because it's entertaining. The animation is good. Um, it, I just also just really like a good sports anime. So yeah, yeah, good deal. Well, um, I've seen quite a few, uh, premieres in the past couple weeks. Um, Hanimbato, obviously we talked about, um, last week, Mark and I talked about Asubi Asobase. That one's pretty funny. Um, Mark saw Island, so I decided to see the first episode. I was confused. Crunchy, Crunchyroll is hel- hyping it up a lot, and it it looks so uninteresting to me. I was confused with the first episode. I have to see the next one, or I guess next two. I'll give it the three episode rule before, but like it just seems like you know standard visual novel. Um, Mm. mystery harem i guess i don't know um harakana receive mark and i have been watching that that's been pretty entertaining i think you would enjoy that um that one's going to be way more blatantly yuri than uh hanebato yeah. will be <laughs> <laughs> um angels of death i was confused at that um that one i'm very considering dropping after the first episode but i'll give it 
the two episode rule before I decide that. <laughs> um, how to not summon a demon lord. They're getting into basically what I've read. So um, I'm, you know, probably going to keep watching that. It's just kind of mindless. Um, I shut Koma my Suba S. Not not as good, but like yeah. I just shut my brain off and go like, all right, well, yeah. haha, at a couple of things. Um, mm-hmm. Music Girls, um, more idol anime. It this one's kind of different because the main character can't sing, but like she's very, she's got like musically talented parents, but she picks up dancing very well and like is basically like supporting this idol group from the background. So Mm. I'll give that a couple more episodes before I decide. Um, Yuna and the haunted hot springs. I am probably going to drop. Yeah. I, (laughs) that was one that I was like, maybe gonna, gonna watch. And then I, I started it and I'm like, no, this, I, I can't. (laughs) Yeah. The, it's basically Yu Yu Hakusho, you know, typical um, harem and ra- harem, not even rom com. Like, because like just they're like a good stu- rom coms, but like story, this is just like, like convoluted. It's just so dumb. tropey and generic, and it's just like, uh, and like it's. Like the characters are so tropey. There's the obvious, um, not like you can tell like she's gonna be the Sundara character, but like she's just all Sun right now, and it's just like super fucking annoying because you know how like it's just I I was just like I can't continue this show. Um, it's worse than uh, what was that that one we watched with the same joke about stabbing the dude to death. Um. Oh, um, with the Grim Reaper lady, yeah, who, like that like, one. The, yeah, I don't remember that one. Was at yeah. least a little bit more. That's what it reminded me original, of. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. The, it, it was. was they're, they're both. Stu- I didn't finish that one either. I didn't so. <laughs> finish that one, but this one is already on my drop list. Um, Holmes of Kyoto. Um, it seems like mystery, and I enjoyed the first episode, so I'll. You know, keep my eyes on that one. Uh, Chio School Road is something that Mark turned me on to. And it's basically just like your typical um, four panel manga adaptation. It's pretty, it's been pretty funny. Like the first episode, I was like, eh, okay. But the second episode was way funnier. Um, sh- okay, so this one's interesting. Shoujo Ka- Kageki Review Starlight. So, this I was not really sure what to expect from it, but it's kind of giving me similar vibes to like uh like in just style like to Marar M- Mawaru Penguin Drum and mm. um Utena. Mm. So like obviously those two anime were like by the same um creator, but yeah this like it's so it's basically like think of magical girl theater um just like and theater like theatrical like a- acting dancing like ballet that kind of thing mm-hmm. and that's basically what this is and i was mm-hmm. like oh this is interesting and like i was getting like the just like the way the style was similar vibes to like Utna and Mawaru Penguin Drum. And so I was like, okay, um, I'll give this the three episode rule. Cause it, it was, it was the most, Takes my interest, like different and unexpected for me. So, um, maybe I'll, I'll try that one. That, that piques my interest. Um, I have a love hate relationship with Utsu and I, it's it's very strange the the first the first season is awful and then the it finishes up like really well um and then Penguin Drum was very strange but it was weird I I I really like the animation quality and it, not not your typical like um magical girl yeah like very 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 different but also a very magical girl at the same time <laughs> yeah but i mean like those two also were very 
just talky. Iku, Ikuhara and his yeah. drugs. Um, <laughs> you, you can tell at least with this one that it's influenced by that, but it's not the same. Yeah. So that's yeah. where I'm a little, I'm a little, I guess, um, I mean, intrigued. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, last few are Hyakuren no Hao to Seiyaku no Valkyria. And that one is just straight typical isekai. Um, dude is in another world and he's just like got a harem of chicks. There's like three of those. This, There's uh, like this a season. billion of them. <laughs> There's like three of them every season. Um, yeah. That's that. Um, Backstreet Girls. Um, that's it was it was, you know, funny. I might give this the two episode rule because it seems like it's going to be the same type of humor over and over mm. where it gets old. And then there's yeah. a Shichisei no Subaru, which is um, kind of got it's a similar premise to Sword Art Online where, I mean, spoiler alert, in the first episode, a character dies because they died in the game. Ooh. So, but they come back when the game is re-released and they're in the game. So, Ooh. spoiler alert for the first episode. Ooh, what a twist. What a twist. But yeah, that's like, it's, I don't know. Like, it's, we'll see with that one too. Okay. Any of these pique your interest? Yeah, that's uh, Shoujo uh, Kaki uh Kaje Ki Revu Starlight or whatever. That sounds interesting to me. Um, I might watch Demon Lord. I probably won't. It's eh. um, and maybe Harukana receive. I don't, I don't know if I can deal with all that Yuri right now. <laughs> oh, um, I skipped Grand Blue, but that was the one where like the dude goes to college on this island and like yeah. they're in a diving club. It was like, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, that was also another seemed like very visual novelty anime. But yeah, if uh, if anything, I'm going to check out that uh, Magical Girl one. Sounds very interesting. I mean, anytime you bring up like Ikihara anime, it's like got I mean, he's Sailor Moon for God's sake. Like, <laughs> gotta gotta pay respect to the Magical Girl. And if uh, if they're using him as kind of a reference point, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well. uh Moving, moving on. Um, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that's my sister raiding in Destiny. Um, <laughs> so you, so like going to closing, you went to breweries while you were in Wisconsin. That's why you were gone. Yeah, there was a cup. The, that's like all there is to do there. Eat fried cheese curds, which if you mm. haven't had that, it's delicious. So I, I had a lot of that. Uh, fried everything. They, they fry everything there, and they they drink a lot of beer. So that was a lot of what I did while I was there when I wasn't <laughs> working. Um, one of the breweries that I wanted to point out, and there was there were several good beers that I had, but I didn't have a chance to go to the breweries. But I went to uh, Ale Asylum. It's in Madison, Wisconsin. It's right by the uh, the airport that you fly into, and they have some really good beer. Beer. Um, I was really sad that that we can't get them out here to try them because they like they they had a Dippa that was like really really good. They had um, they had a hazy IPA that was delicious. Um, and their their vibe is really cool. There's like I forget I forget the name of some of the beers, but um, it has like a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde kind of vibe, and it's like very industrial when you go there. Um, their colors are like gray and orange, um, but very cool and very very good beer. So, uh, props to Wisconsin. Um, and like I said, I, I had I had a bunch of other beers and stuff too, but I, I actually had the opportunity to go to that uh, brewery, and it was it was great. Mm, nice. Um, sad we can't sad we can't get those, but if uh, if we uh, Keep our eyes peeled. Maybe uh, it'll be out here soon because it's really popular over there as well. So maybe it'll start branching out. Maybe. I mean, craft brew is just like a, a thing yeah. that's just like exploding everywhere across the U.S. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be oh, surprised. And I, th- and I thought it was interesting, too, that um, Oberon, the that Mark picked the other week. I saw that like everywhere up there. And oh, yeah. I'd never seen it. I'd never seen it before. So <laughs> I was like, oh, OK. Yeah, Bell's so. Brewing apparently is like, um, like one of the like it's exactly what you ex- like would expect from, 
what was that asylum is that what you said asylum yeah like that might be the like the next you know midwest right. craft brewery to yeah like make it strike it big yeah so look out for ale asylum boys um heard it here first <laughs> yeah uh comic-con news would uh you heard anything from comic-con that was this weekend? no i've just been trying to avoid it i was wondering if you had heard anything or not um well the guardians of the galaxy 3 um director got fired yeah i heard that because of you know racist treats or something <laughs> um i i don't know the exact details but i don't think that's the whole extent i think there's also like pedophilia involved and like that kind of hmm. it's well. like you know the type of thing where you write a comment on the internet and then like years later it bites you in the ass so it's like yeah. if you jokingly say something about pedophilia and liking it you know hmm. it'll probably come back years later so you probably don't yeah do that. generally so don't don't do that yeah. <laughs> um so I guess there's that. There's other stuff. Um, I think they. My girlfriend's friend, um, who's also I guess my friend, um, she ate a scorpion, like a live scorpion or something, for Comic Con. The, the, yeah, for like the Tomb Raider game or something. The new Tomb Raider game. A um, live scorpion. I don't know if it was live or not, but it was on their Facebook page, and like she ate it. <laughs> Would, and they got a copy of the game or something. I think that's all they got. I'm like, I don't know if I would have done uh, that. <laughs> what did it, did it like taste like anything other than like. I didn't talk to her. I just saw it on, on Facebook. Uh, I, I'll see her next week and I'll, I'll, I'll ask. She'd be like <laughs> I threw up instantly afterwards. It's like, uh, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Well, Comic-Con, yeah. uh, always a shit show. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, whoever, like, if you're um, listening to this and went to Comic-Con, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, so. I personally don't like to go out and, like, the, and it, it wasn't like it was, like, crazy hot. It was, it was kind of hot today. And stand in lines and do virtually one thing all day. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that, so. Yeah. <laughs> As a, as evidenced by last year's Anime Expo while we were waiting in, waiting in line for the badge pickup. That's right. That's right. Well, um, is there anything else that you want to talk about? No, I think that's, that's it. Um, hopefully we'll have uh, three of the four back next week. Um, hopefully four. We'll yeah, see. Hopefully four, but we'll see. Keep your, keep your eyes peeled and... Um, Maybe maybe we'll get on uh, some Stardew Valley sometime this week. Maybe maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like something something that'd be fun. So yeah, we'll see see what happens. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's all I got, man. All right. Well, uh, the two amigos, the dos amigos from Anime yeah. on Draft, um, episode fifty nine in the books. Yep. So uh, that's right. Well, how get does it feel? Shiner Bach. How does it get feel to be back? Shiner Bach. It's good. You know, I, I did a lot of work, but now I, I'm back. I moved um, same city, but different place. And now I'm all settled. I have my figurines set up. Oh. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll take a picture of my setup and I'll have Mark uh, post it on uh, on the uh, Twitter or the Instagram. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you guys can, can take a look at my my collection. Um, my girlfriend said, you have this many multiple yeah. times. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> throughout the setup, and then she's like, "You have this many of the blonde one, and oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I I have yeah. a lot of Shinobu." <laughs> you, you also bought a lot of those in Japan, so like those were recent yeah. purchases. Yeah, um, I have like the full set of Madoka Monogatari crossover figures um, of the Crane Game figures, anyway. So very cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully we see that on social media or or whatever yeah. WordPress. I don't. I don't know. Like, who knows no, what's going on with any of that nowadays? No, who knows? Um, but so speaking of, our WordPress is animeondraft.wordpress.com. Our Twitter is yeah. at animeondraft. Our Instagram, yeah, fuck, I forgot what that is, but I think it's like 
It's some some sort of anime on draft. The like anime on draft or something. Underscores. <laughs> I don't know. Mark changed it. I like. He go to the Twitter and it. then go to Instagram. I or don't. yeah, whatever. Like you, you, you can find it on WordPress. I I think. And then uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. Search for anime on draft. And yeah, this has been yeah. a good episode. And I uh, hope to see you get next yourself, time. Get yourself a Shiner Bach. Sit out on the porch and uh, beat the heat. All right. And we bid you adieu. Later.